definition of art and its functions, meaning of art. See, art is a complex human phenomena. It has got variety of meanings. For some, art may be the mode of expression. For some, it may be the recording of the time period. For some, it may be the utility. And for some, it may be even the astonishing mode of expression. There are so many variety of meanings, varied meanings, that has made the art complex in today's reference. Because in today's reference, after the post-war period, art has passed through such complexities where the human expressions have got so much of variety, so much of variety, that it really becomes difficult to understand it. Of course, we can experience it, but understanding the art means we got to pass through its language. And this is the language that we are talking about in this chapter. Indian approach towards art. This is quite obvious that uh, our Indian art is different than the West. We'll talk about West later on, but let us talk about Indian art. See, we have the traces of Indian art right from the Indus Valley, which are available to us. There are, I mean, our scholars say that there are references in Vedas about art expressions, but we don't have the physical examples. The physical examples of art are found only from the period of Indus Valley civilization, which we say Mohenjo-daro and Harappa and Lothal, Loth etc. Now you see in this art, in Indian art, if we calculate the growth of Indian art, it may be sculpture or it may be painting. Well, unfortunately, in Indus Valley civilization, we see very few examples of painting. And uh, we can see the drawings and delineations of, or uh, say, rendering of human figures or animals on some seals. But in major, we don't find the paintings there. But we can trace out the quality of the drawing available during the Indus Valley period. But slowly and gradually, when we move towards Ajanta, and suddenly we come across such an art which it started initially with, it, with its uh, archaic period and grew to the classicism and then added with the examples like European Baroque, we say Baroque means it, it, it spreads out and uh, passes, I mean it, it crosses the limits of the classicism. Now, see, Ajanta, the total Ajanta proves that the Indian art is the art of line. Indian artist has always expressed through line. Line has become so, such an important phenomena. Through line he expresses each and everything. The gestures, the human expressions, the costumes, the jewelry, the uh, varied persons. I mean, he has created the entire world, binding it in the line, which is completely unlike Europe. In Indian, Indian art, we have taken care of colors also. Now see, the line is very important in Indian art. You may see it in Ajanta, or you may see even much before in Indus Valley, or you, you may see it later on in Mughal arts, Rajasthani miniature art, or Pahari miniatures. And it continues till the disintegration of British power from India. See, it was unfortunate that Britishers rejected our art, Indian art. They said that we do not know what art is and they opened four school of arts in our country. One in North, that, is, that was in Lahore, another in South in uh, Chennai. Third was, uh, which, was, which was called as the Madras College of Art. Third was in Bombay, that was West India and J.J. School of Art, and fourth was in Calcutta in the East. So they opened these four School of Arts and started giving the coaching to Indian students of Western art. 
We'll talk about Western art later, what Western art is. But Indian art was taught to the, to the assistants by their teachers in their studios. And the method was very different. They were looking at the world. They were, of course, observing the world. But they were going through rigorous, rigorous, say, craftsmanship. They were achieving the craftsmanship. And later on, after coming from the studio of their teacher, they would start expressing their own. And of course, you know, in India, we generated a kind of group styles also. There were very, very few individual styles. We had group styles. So the qualities of Indian art is, first, it is the art of line. Second, it is the, it is the art of color. Then thirdly, it is the art of expression. And our expression emerges from intuition, not from the observation of the world only. Intuition becomes most important. So line, intuition, and color, these three things met together and we created our own mode of expressions, our group styles. From Ajanta, if you move to, towards Jain school of painting or in the mural school of painting in the south and then move towards Pali school and after Pali school, if we follow it up in Mughal school of painting, then Rajasthani variety school of paintings, uh, Udaipur, Jaipur, Kota, Bundi, Charawa, and uh, Jodhpur, Kishangarh, uh, Devgarh, all these arts are different in their in their in their forms. They are varied with their qualities, but still they are the group styles. And uh, this way, Indian art created its own way of doing. And something like Chinese or Japanese, we had a very rich art form with different kind of expressions completely unlike Europe. Now we talk of European art. Western approach towards art is from the intellect, not from the intuition like Indian art. They very intellectually observe the world, they measure the world, they measure each and everything, they bother for the perspective, it may be linear or it may be aerial perspective, but they are mainly concerned about the form. Indianers were concerned about line, but the Westerners are concerned about form. Form is so important to them. Then they paint what they see. They always believed in what is existing in front of us. They never believed in the spiritualism or in that kind of intuition which Indian painters were doing. If an Indian painter was painting a Radha or Krishna, he would say that the Radha's image and Krishna's image is in his mind, in his heart, and he would paint it from his heart with the intuition. But if a Westerner painter is being asked to paint Radha and Krishna, he will keep the model there and he will paint the model. And see, if, if I have a model which is, which is doing commercial work, it can never generate the feelings of Radha in her. It will be physical model, but that is, that is what Western art is. Right from the Greek period till the I mean, uh, beginning of Impressionism, what we see is the art that people observe. You see the world, painted exactly as it is, with very little variations. Of course, there were variations. In classic period, they had different concept. In Baroque, they had different concept. In Rococo, they got over-ornamented. In uh, uh, neoclassicism, they came out with different concept. There were different movements, there, there undoubtedly. But the main concern about Western art is it is the art of intellect, it is the art from mind, it is the art of form, and it, is, it does not allow any kind of intuition to be done till the chapter of modern art begins. We say it nearly Matis or Picasso mainly, mainly from Picasso when the Cubism got the birth. Importance of art. 
See, for the human being, arts are very important. It may be visual arts or performing arts or any kind of arts, but they are such an important affair in, in the human life. Imagine if there are no colors in the life, what would be the life? So you are, you are not looking at shapes and forms anywhere. You are sleeping on the flat bed without on, on, on just nothing on it. Or you are sitting and there are no trees, no plants, no colors, no flowers. See how the tragic life will be. So art has become so important. It gives us the history. It gives us the picture of culture. It gives, it works as a mirror of human expressions in different period. So I believe that art is so important in life. People who do not confess art or who do not look at art in their life really have got a very dry life. Well, I believe that art is produced from inside the man. Art is here, and whatever he experiences, that comes out. So, as a matter of fact, origin of art is inside the man himself. It is created here. How it is created? There are many effects that are assembled in the heart, and that creates the image, and then it comes out. Well, meaning of art has to do something with the human feelings. One feels inside, he opens his mind, he either speaks in words or he sings or he paints or he sculpts. So these are the ways of expression of a human being. If you take up history, you see how we have found art in the caves, in earlier caves of those persons who knew nothing about art. Even they created art. In caves, long, long history is there. And an uh, artist is creating, since that time, he was experiencing wild animals, fighting with them, then trying to express them on the raw and dirty and rough walls of the hills, caves. There are lots of examples of that. Yeah, five or ten years, uh, ten thousand years earlier. Well, we had been very different from Westerns. You see, West, West is trying to visualize uh, the uh, visual experience that he is having from the uh, hill animals, men, and so on. He is experiencing in a very different way and he is trying to create in the three-dimensional way. Well, Indian art is transformed. It is two-dimensional, mostly two-dimensional. They have eliminated all the uh, extra elements which are creating three dimensions. Of course, there is something uh, like three-dimensionally in Ajanta painting, but that is very stylized and different than what Western world has created. Even Gupta periods, you see that uh, all these sculptors, that gives a really little realistic feeling, yet they are stylized. There is a lot of difference between the Western work of art and Indian work of art. We feel in a different way, they feel in that. They go for the study, face to face they study, they go for landscape, they 
go for creating animals while seeing the animals and other things. We apply more imagination and there is more creative instinct in Indian art than Western art of that time. Just to motivate, just to motivate a person, just to move inside. You see, when we face a Bhagavad, when we face a Bhagavad, you see, we are so motivated from inside that we are lost for some time. As you must have experienced while visiting Picasso's museum there in France very recently, two, three years back, how he transformed visual form into various ways that were not experienced by uh, Westerners, earlier Westerners, who painted in a very three-dimensional way. He created his own world of art. So, artist has a world in himself. He creates his own world and he is only the artist or others are imitators. Man is, man is a dead figure without art. If heart, his heart does not beat, there is nothing in the world. It gives the human feeling, art gives the human feeling. It is the inside that throbs. Art is created, there are two OV uh, origins of art. One is mind, another is heart. You see, these are two places where art is conceived. Mind is uh, very constructive in a very scientific way that arranges everything in order, systematically. You, you, you can discuss on everything just like a science person. But inside, there are lots of things, feelings are there, emotions are there, they create the image, imagination is there, outer effects are there. And so, art is as a matter of fact conceived inside. When you start a work of art on a piece of canvas or a piece of cloth or uh, a piece of uh, stone, or in any way, then that is transformed into the, with the norms of art which helps him to create and tell his mind. Hope you have enjoyed the discussions today and would get something academically on fine arts.